hello everyone so in this video we will discuss about the third cranial nerve that is oculomotor nerve so oculomotor nerve contains motor fibers and parasympathetic fibers so we can say that oculomotor nerve is a mixed nerve so <coughs> in the previous video we were discuss about the motor and the parasympathetic nucleus of oculomotor nerve in the uh, level of brain stem and the midbrain so we have discussed the location basically of the nucleus so here we have taken a part of superior golliculus that is midbrain so this is your superior golliculus in which your motor and parasympathetic nucleus of oculomotor nerve is present so this is your uh, superior golliculus so in this we have uh, uh, three nucleus two parasympathetic and one motor so this uh, part is your median this which, which will divide the superior golliculus in two parts median sulcus we can say that and here at the level this is your unpaired nucleus of parasympathetic fibers of oculomotor nerve this is your adinger westphal nucleus this is your adinger westphal nucleus and just uh, later to that is your motor nucleus this is your motor nucleus of oculomotor nerve and just parallel to that is your paired pearlian nucleus it is paired this is your pearlia parasympathetic nucleus so here you can also show this this side this is your motor and this one is your pearlia so from here <coughs> so from here all the three fibers two parasympathetic fibers just comes out from the brain and one motor and the exit place from the brain is your interpeduncular fossa between the two peduncles of the midbrain so this is uh, we can't uh, this is your interpeduncular fossa so we will write uh, at the above that exit place from brain exit place from brain is your interpeduncular fossa interpeduncular fossa so from here your nerves exit from the brain now it continues <coughs> in the cavernous sinus now all the three fibers together continues in the cavernous sinus so this is your cavernous sinus this is your cavernous sinus now before entering the cavernous sinus the nerve is present between two arteries that is superior cerebral artery cerebellar artery and posterior cerebral artery because of this one clinical significance is that that is aneurysm can occur because due to the any distension or any bulkness in the arteries these two arteries because this nerve is present between these two arteries superior cerebellar artery and super, uh, posterior cerebellar artery so because of these bulge or any atherosclerosis or any type of high blood pressure or any type of uh, abnormal blood supply to this two arteries this can <coughs> uh, press this nerve due to this any type of paralysis can occur to the eye muscles so here between this at a level of this so now from the cavernous sinus it continues to your uh, brain that is skull so from here these three fibers from here and goes through your superior orbital fissure this is your superior orbital fissure so from here these three fibers exit through your skull that is skull cavity or brain cavity so from exit place from your skull is your superior orbital fissure skull your superior orbital fissure so from here the uh, these three fibers exit from your uh, brain cavity so 
these fibers exit so after exiting they give two branches the first branch is your purely motor that is superior branch that only supplies your motor and the inferior branch contains both motor and parasympathetic fibers so this is your uh, inferior branch which contains your both fibers that is motor and parasympathetic and upper branch only contains your motor fibers so <coughs> The ocular motor basically supplies your extra ocular muscles of the eye. That is all extens extrinsic muscles of the eye. <coughs> there are six extrinsic muscles, but ocular motor only supplies the four extrinsic muscles. Other two are supplied by trochlear and abducens. So the four muscles which are supplied by uh, ocular motor nerves are first one is the superior rectus, levator palpebris superior, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique muscles. Lateral rectus is supplied by your uh, abducens nerve. Superior oblique is uh, supplied by your trochlear nerve. So this is your now, this is your in superior branch of oculomotor nerve, and this is your inferior branch, which contains both fibers, motor and parasympathetic. Superior only contains your motor fibers. And now the superior branch supplies uh, two uh, extrinsic muscles of the eye. The first one is your <coughs> levator. Levator palpebrae muscles that is present in your eyelids, and another one is your superior rectus. So, these two muscles, eye muscles, extensive muscles, are supplied by your superior branch, and three muscles uh, and uh, uh, three muscles are supplied by your inferior branch. So first one is your medial rectus, uh, sorry medial rectus. Next one is your inferior rectus, and last one is your inferior oblique muscle. And from inside eye, this parasympathetic fi uh, fibers forms a ganglion that is called your ciliary ganglion. This is your ciliary ganglion so involuntary so now ciliary ganglion uh, supplies two intrinsic muscles that is first one is your ciliary muscles and this controls your accommodation and sphincter pupillary muscles which, uh, which dilates or um, widens your pupils sphincter pupillary sphincter pupillary muscles so these two muscles these two are extensive muscles and these five muscles are your these four muscles are extensive muscle and this one is your in the eyelid that is above your eyelid this muscle controls your eyelid movements so <coughs> so now uh, for your easier I will show this muscles in the eyes so now this is your basically you consider it, it as your right eye this is your right eye so here uh, the level it is your superior rectus muscle and above this is your superior oblique and here it is your medial rectus and here it is your inferior rectus and here it is your inferior oblique and here is your lateral rectus so these are your extensive muscles and above this is your levator palpebrae muscles so that is your levator palpebrae muscles this is your superior oblique and this is your superior rectus this is your medial rectus this is your inferior rectus this is your inferior oblique and this is your lateral rectus so these are the muscles so uh, because of ocular motor any type of paralysis occurs in your ocular motor nerve then this medial rectus this eyeball shift towards the lateral position of your eye so an eyelids droops so basically the clinical points of this uh, ocular motor nerves are your first one is your uh, tosses in which your eyelids or uh, eyelids will droop down that is fall downwards it will look like lazy eye and drooping of eyelid 
drooping of eyelid and second one is your strabismus and which both your eyelids uh, that is eyeball will not align in uh, one position that is one eyeball will be aligning in another position um, more medially and another one is uh, in the medial position and another one is the lateral position so <coughs> if a person standing in front of you if you will see your eyeball they will not uh, align in one position one eyeball will be in another direction and one eyeball in another direction so strabismus is the condition which will lead to any type of injury to your oculomotor nerve and third one is your uh, loss of accommodation can occur due to your involuntary muscles ciliary muscles loss of accommodation and if your media if your medial rectus muscle is uh, uh, injured or something has happened then you can't be able to your adduction adduction of your eyeball so these are the main clinical points of your oculomotor nerve and one i have told between the arteries these nerves are present so because of any type of atherosclerosis or any type of high blood pressure these nerve can be compressed by these two arteries due to any bulge in these two arteries so this is your basic uh, scheme of your oculomotor nerve